Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, I want to share with you some selection techniques as well as some lasso tool techniques to help you with your inking. So I've got three different shapes here. I've got a brick wall, I've got a bush, and I've got a tire. And these techniques save me quite a bit of time, which is why I'm excited to share them with you. And if you look very closely at these objects, I've put little X's. These are the areas where it's going to be primarily dark. There's not going to be any light associated with it. So in inking, you're dealing with pretty much black and white. And same thing here with this bush. This is an area that's going to be somewhat dark. Um, and the other parts are going to be illuminated. And the tire, I haven't really denoted anything about that specially. So let's go ahead and take a look and see how we can work with this. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to drop the opacity of this pencils layer just so I can see my work easier. And I'll go ahead and lock that pencils layer down too so I don't accidentally draw on it. Now, let's take a look at the, the brick wall. That's our simplest configuration here. If we go up to our lasso tool and choose polygon or polygonal lasso tool, you get this uh, lasso tool selection tool. And if you click and drag, you can make a straight line. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make an outline of the part that is going to be covered in black, make a selection, choose my black color, and hit Option Delete or Alt Backspace. So this saves me quite a bit of work. Now I can come back with my standard brush tool. And let's make sure my brush is set to 100%. I can use my shift key to make straight lines. And I can make short work of that. So that saves me quite a bit of time. Let's take a look at the bush. With the bush, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and make my outline here. I'm not being super precious about this, but just there we go. I'll close all my gaps. This is something that I always forget to do. So now that I've got this shape here, <clears throat> what I can do is I can turn off the pencils layer. Let's verify that all the gaps are closed. I see that there's some that are still open. And that looks good. So I can use my magic wand tool. You want to make sure your magic wand tool has anti-alias, contiguous, and sample all layers checked in order for you to be able to select this. And what we're going to do next is we're going to make a new layer. We're going to fill that in with black. We'll deselect by hitting Command or Control D. We'll drop the opacity to about 60%. And when the reveal our pencil so we can see what we're going to be subtracting from. So we're going to now take the regular lasso tool, the standard lasso tool, and on this layer that is now got some opacity associated with it, I will just simply make some selections like so. And I'll hit Command X, and then I'll bring the opacity back up. And then if I need to, if I want to go ahead and tweak this a little bit more, maybe throw in a few areas where you see some light hitting some of the bushes, you can go ahead and do that. And that's just, I'm getting rid of these objects by hitting Command or Control X and cutting out from this. So this is another way that you can utilize these techniques and then you can always come back in and add some other texture elements, some details as you see fit. All right, so now let's take a look at the tire. Well, the tire is round, and I, I might struggle with actually making a round circle, right? So what I can do is I can use my elliptical marquee tool and approximate that shape. I can fill that in. Then what I can do is, with that selection still active, I can go to my select menu. I can choose modify, contract, 
Oh, I hit expand by accident. Modify, contract, and you'll get a dialog box that pops up. It'll say contra uh, contract selection. Let's just choose 20 pixels. And before you uh, start deselecting it, you just shift it over a little bit like so. So you'll see that the selection um, will leave us with a thicker line on the right and a thinner line on the left. Now I can hit Command X and I've got this really nice, pretty ink line. Now I can just simply duplicate that and then move the lower layer over and then use my lasso tool to cut and then clean this part up, the top part and just make my connections. So these might help you out um, when you're working. And then of course I've got that little oval in the middle so I can just duplicate that by hitting Command J. Shrink that down. That already has a really cool line weight associated with it. Hit return and I can just fill that in. So now I've got this tire that looks really nice and round. So if you're working digitally, you might as well leverage some of the tools that you have available to you. So that way you're not reinventing the wheel and getting frustrated. So that's the uh, subtractive method of, uh, and, and the additive method of actually going ahead and creating um, you know, black fills as well as um, working with other objects. Now, I wanna leave you with one more bonus tip if you've watched this video long enough. Um, if you hold down the Shift L key, you can toggle between your three lasso tools. That's really, really cool. And let's say that I wanted to make, um, I don't know, just like a, a ladder or something like that. I'll hit Option Delete, Command J, move this over, merge the two layers, and then make my little um, railing or rung or whatever you call it. And I'll just make duplicates by hitting Command J. I'll merge these three layers together by hitting Command E. These are not perfect, but that's kind of gives it more of an organic feel. And then I'll merge all the layers together like so. I guess I have to move my tire out of the way so you can see this a little bit better. Now, what, what's really neat about this is I can go ahead and now command click on that ladder layer and I can go to select, modify, contract. And this time I'll just choose, um, I don't know, uh, 10. And I'll do the same little trick here where I'll just move. Well, it's our, actually when I have that selection tool active, it automatically kind of shifts it out and I can hit Command X to get rid of it. And then I can come back in and add some dimension. Remember overlap is a great way of adding dimension. And don't forget your textures too. So if this is a wooden ladder, you might see a couple of little dots, stuff that denotes the idea that it's a wooden ladder. So that's something you can definitely try out. It's a really handy way of working, really saves you a ton of time. If you found value in this video, please give it a thumbs up, please like, please subscribe. I uh, definitely appreciate all the feedback and the input that you guys have given me so far. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.